G'day avocado enthusiasts. A couple of weeks ago, I placed some germinated or growing avocado seeds in this fish tank with avocado boats. Now, as I predicted, the tropical water, so the slightly warmer water and the added fertilizer that the fish provide freely have meant that the seeds have grown rapidly. The roots are growing fantastically, but that got me thinking, what makes up a root? What are roots for? Well, today, we're going to be talking about roots. Most of us already know that roots are for drawing water into the plant so that it can be used for photosynthesis, or creating energy, and transpiration, which is the process through which plants ensure that there is always water being pulled throughout the plant. It's really interesting. There's a video on the description of one that I made a little while ago explaining that, and it's really interesting. But what else are they for? Roots have three functions in plants. The first one is to draw in water and nutrients from the medium around it. In the case of the roots of these seeds, they are taking water in from the fish tank and also taking in any nutrition that they need from the water, which is mostly nitrogen from the fish poop. The second purpose is to anchor the plant. Now, these roots aren't doing much anchoring at the moment because there's not really any medium to anchor them into. The water is not a good medium for roots. But once the roots are in soil or in a potting medium, they will grow into it and secure the tree within that. That's going to stop the tree from falling over or it'll keep it upright. And the third purpose, which isn't so much the case for avocados, but it's worth mentioning, is nutrition storage. Many plants don't have adequate access to light throughout the whole year, or it's too cold to grow during the winter. And so what they will do is that they will store energy which they create during the summer in their roots so that it can continue to be alive and use that energy during the winter and is ready to go for the next summer. We see many plants that we eat the roots of, for example, potatoes and carrots, which are full of energy, which is thanks to these storage systems that the plants create. So roots are for absorbing water and nutrition, therefore anchoring the plant in the potting medium, and they are for storing energy for a rainy day. But how do roots even work? Let's talk about the structure of a root. Let's start at the tip of the root, the very end. At the end, we find the root cap. The root cap is the part of the root that tells the root how to grow. There are specialised cells in here which sense gravity and help the roots grow downwards. Above that is the primary meristem. This area is full of meristematic cells. These are cells that are undifferentiated. They could become any part of the root. This is the part which does the growing. As the root grows, the cells become the particular specialised parts of the root and the root cap continues to grow down and the primary meristem continues to move down as well. Throughout the root, there is a vascular tissue or kind of like tubes, a bit like our veins and arteries. And in plants, they're called the xylem and phloem. Xylem transports water and nutrition from what the roots absorb throughout the rest of the plant in a one-way direction from the roots up. The phloem distributes nutrition throughout the entire plant and therefore needs to flow both ways, up and down. It won't just go one way because lots of energy is produced by the leaves in photosynthesis, and that needs to get distributed throughout the entire plant, which is where the phloem are really important. Encasing the vascular tissue is the secondary meristem. This is the tissue that grows the roots thicker. So the primary meristem makes the roots longer, and the secondary meristem makes them thicker. The vascular and secondary meristem tissue is surrounded by a thin waxy layer. This helps to keep the water and nutrition inside of the tissue instead of of seeping into the soil around it. Surrounding that is a structural and a protective layer called the ground layer. Then we get the epidermis or the skin of the root. Many roots will also have root hairs
surface and that's to expand the surface area of root which can take up that water and nutrition. Plants will generally have one of two root systems, tap roots or fibrous roots. Trees will mostly have tap roots, whereas many herbaceous plants will have fibrous systems. Tap roots are when they go deep into the ground, which is really important for holding up of a large mass above the ground. Fibrous root systems will spread out along the surface level of the soil. They generally don't go too deep because they don't have too much to hold up. Avocados have tap root systems and you can actually see the tap roots growing with four of our six seeds in there. Eventually, and you can actually already see it in some of them, you will find secondary roots or roots that are branching out from the primary root. As of right now, four seeds are growing roots. The four which had already cracked open when we put them in there, the avocados named finally and are, haven't quite started, but we'll be keeping an eye on them. And if we need to swap out the seeds for others that have germinated since putting these in the avocado lagoon in the fish tank, we can do that. But the avocados treasure island, United States of avocados, chill and avocado of light are all growing roots. You can see on them a clear tap root and also the beginning of some branching action, which I am very excited about. What I'm also very excited about, and actually I was hoping this would happen a couple of weeks into the future from now, because I wanted to make this video where we just have roots, but Avocado of Light has actually already started growing its stem. The stem has emerged from within the seed. So the hypocotyl or the baby stem has started growing into just the regular stem. We're going to get some leaves very soon, which is very excited, but we're going to talk about that next time. We're going to keep a close eye on these plants over the next few weeks and I will be posting a video once we have some more above water action with our stems and leaves. I am very excited to be sharing that with you. In the meantime, I'm going to continue to do weekly water changes to maintain the health of the aquarium, the health of the fish and continue to observe. If you would like to make sure you see the next avocado growing update, make sure you are subscribed to Scott Grows and Avocado Tree and turn notifications on so that you don't miss an update if you choose. I'm also over on Instagram at Scott Grows and Avocado Tree. If you'd like to get your own avocados, I have an affiliate link in the description below as well, which if you want to set it out on a bowl of water or on a fish tank, you can head over there to do that and it supports me as well. Thank you once again for watching this video. Take care and I'll see you next time. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree.